Hi guys, today I am here with an interesting topic again that is growth and development of craniofacial region. So let's get on to our topic for today is growth and development of maxilla. So let's discuss it under the following contents like prenatal embryology of maxilla, ossification of palate, postnatal development of maxilla, the associated and applied anatomy and the treatment protocols which is generally followed. To begin with, let's trace back our journey of maxilla. So it happens during the fourth week of intrauterine life, there is a prominent bulge which appears on the ventral aspect of the embryo close to the developing brain. So as we can see in the figure, here is a developing forebrain and here we have the mesenchymal covering for the forebrain and then this prominent bulge is appearing here. So now, below the bulge, there is a shallow depression which corresponds to the primitive mouth called as stomodium. So this is a very important developmental aspect of an embryo in which there is a primitive mouth formation that is occurring around fourth week of intrauterine life. To continue the prenatal embryology of maxilla, there is formation of buccopharyngeal membrane that separates the stomodium from the foregut. So that is how the initial development of prenatal embryology of maxilla is beginning. To continue with, there is prenatal embryology of prominent areas such as maxillo front maxilla like frontonasal process. So if you look into the diagram or the picture given here is to be illustrated, there is a prominent bulge towards the down in the downward direction called as frontonasal process. So the bulge that is initially formed attains or has a direction of shift towards downward in forming the frontonasal process. Moving on to which the mandibular arch that gives off a bud on its ventral aspect called as the maxillary process. Moving on to which let's see the embryo now. Where is it? So we have here first the maxillary process which is grown from the ventral aspect of the mandibular process which is also which is also the derivative of the first arch, first pharyngeal arch. Now what is the embryo now? What are its parts? So we, here we have frontal prominence and the stomodium that is clearly defined at this stage of embryonic development. So let's compare it with an adult. So let's see which processes is later developing into which structures or organs later. So first we have the frontonasal area which is demarcated within the embryo at six weeks. It's fully grown in an adult and the lateral nasal process which is very initiated or it's not so prominent in an embryo which is fully developed in an adult the globular and the maxillary processes and the mandibular processes so these processes tend to develop quite a lot during the embryonic pre-embryonic as well as the development of an adult now this is important because there is the growth of other structures such as palate which is considered highly important for the growth and development of maxilla because palate is very essential for the development overall development of maxilla now let's see what is uh, the palate made up of or how is the palatal structures that come together and creates this space of palate so here we have the lateral nasal processes the frontonasal processes as well as the maxillary processes which are the derivatives of the first pharyngeal arch now what is a palate consisting of? What are its components? It's not a unit derived structure. It's a derivative of three different structures including maxillary process, palatal shelves which is given off by the maxillary process and the anterior which is given off by the frontonasal process. So now there are two occasions in which the palate formation is complete. First we have the primary palate which is the initial, which is then at the later stage of development is transformed into a secondary palate, which is more ossified. So now let's see what is a primary palate composed of. So it is mainly composed of a premaxillary area, which is derived from the frontonasal portion and along with the medial nasal process. So you have first the premaxilla, which is complemented on the either sides by the maxillary process from either sides. Which on to when we move on to the secondary palate, which is more developed, which we can only see or appreciate 
during sixth week of embryonic time. So we started our journey from fourth. Now we are at, at the sixth week of embryonical development. We have the formation of the two palatal shelves that are completely formed with a maxillary prominence. So let's look on to first. Let's look look it on to. So we have first the primary palate and the secondary palate. So here primary palate is completely fused. We have a building block in which the ossification of the two palatal shelves from the projection of this primary palate is complete by fusion in secondary palate. Now there are some more interesting factors which uh, which is related to palate which plays an important role in the development of maxilla. So the ossification of palate is only completed or initiates in the week of eighth, eighth week of intrauterine life. Now the intramembranous type of ossification we have discussed earlier what are the type of types of ossification like endochondrial and intramembranous bone formation. So here there is complete uh, formation of bone. There is no cartilage that is being replaced. It's the bone deposition that is taking place within the palate ossification. So it's a type of intramembranous ossification that is happening or I will say that it is not completed in eighth week but major of it get laid down during eighth week. Now moving on to the mid palatal sutures is only getting completely ossified up to 12 to 14 years. So it's just a long process which begins a little by little like we saw the journey when it was fourth week, then sixth week and then prolonged to the eighth week. So there is a continuous ossification that is taking place up to 12 to 14 years and the most posterior part of this palate is not ossified and it's being a part of something what we call in an adult as soft palate. So soft palate has a completely different type of ossification or it is not at all ossified than the hard palate. So these structures are very important as part of maxilla. Now there are so many complications which can be associated at different frame of the development of palate which can create main abnormalities like cleft palate, cleft lip. So it can be a fully full cleft involving the hard palate, soft palate and the developing structure of ovula or it can be a restricted palate just like in hard palate or it has just progressed towards the lip. So these are all important considering why ossification or the timeline of palate, palate formation is considered. So moving on to which we have many other changes that takes place in maxilla along with the other component structures of maxilla which gets redefined or rebound or it's, it, has growth, it has got a growth of various other components that put together the overall development of maxilla. So let's look on to it, how it is contributed one by one. So the first growth of nasal maxillary component is by three methods. So this we, we have discussed uh, earlier, uh, such as in the theories of growth and development previously. So we have displacement, growth at sutures, surface remodeling. So you can just quickly recollect the theories associated with growth and development, the various authors has proposed, which I cannot discuss further on in this uh, video. So let's go back and see. So the applied aspect of those theory comes in discussing how the growth and development of maxilla or mandible happens. So now it's time for us to deal or to take in account the primary displacement aspect in which the bone itself grows and creates a space or it, it is pronounced by the growth of the bone itself. So here what we have is the growth of maxilla in its tuberosity side and it is pushed away from the cranial base. So that is very important aspect for the primary displacement. Moving on to which we have a secondary displacement which is happening while the primary displacement on either side. We have the downward and the forward movement of maxilla which is also taking place in the reverse direction. So first the primary displacement happens followed by the secondary displacement. Moving on to which again we have the next theory on our list is structural theory or the sutural growth centers which also contributes to the overall development of maxilla like the commonest sutures is the frontonasal suture, frontomaxillary suture, zygomatic maxillary suture, zygomaticotemporal suture and the pterygopalatine sutures. So the development or the closure of these sutures can also uh, bring about a much morphological change in the overall development of maxilla. Now moving on to the postnatal development or uh, maxilla regarding the theory of V or the N-loss theory, it explains 
the growth of development in an inverted V shape. So there is posterior growth and the distance between the two arms of the V is having more deposition than in its anterior aspect.